is the BLMRA 500, a 14 hour endurance lawnmower race. Yes, that's right. Here we are on our Westwood lawn bug and we're taking this thing on for the first time. And here's the start of the race. So here we go at the start, it's a Le Mans start. So you've got to start on the other side of the track, run across your mower. Here we go, running across, cut up switch in, starter on and off we go. You can see I just dumped the clutch a little bit too fast and the engine starts to go, but I get it back up and running. So here we are picking our line on the right. You can see it's ultra busy as we come down into the first left-hander. Some people are sending it, some people are super conservative. I move my way over to the left-hand side. I don't want to get collected on the outside. You can see a couple of people getting up on two wheels as we come through this first left-hander. Some people getting opportunistic with the moves. As we follow our way through, you've got to be aggressive, but you don't want to be too aggressive. You don't want to end your race right here, but also you don't want to get caught up in the melee behind you. So here we come down into the first hairpin. You can see just how muddy and bumpy the track already is from practice and qualifying and all the prep. So here we are slotting into this first lap. So this is a 500 lap race, 500 laps on a lawnmower. And we estimated at the start it's going to take about 14 hours. So all of these teams, around 50 teams, so 50 lawnmowers on this circuit, settle in for this 14 hour race. It started here at 7 p.m. and we run all the way through eventually till 9 a.m. <laughs> 14 hours on a lawnmower. So here we are, we're in a team of three. You can see I'm starting to make a little bit of progress, trying to round the outside of Gin Racing there, number 52, as a, oh, and here we go, number 84, that's a tourist mower. So there are a few different classes in this. So 84, that's a tourist mower. It doesn't fit our regulations. They're allowed to run, but they can't win overall. 52, he's a group four. So these are the tractor bonneted lawn mowers. They should be the quickest overall. I'm on a Westwood lawn bug. It looks a little bit like this. And then we also have a group two. These are the tow along, tow behind uh, lawn mowers. So number 34 in front, that is another Westwood lawn bug. And they actually got a better launch than us. So they're ahead of us. So this is a move four position. I believe we're in P5 here. And as I have a look here, I do want to get, you know, get up through the ranks. Here we go, as we slot through into P4 as quickly as possible. So that's a position made already, lap two. So here we go. Here's, here's a, a lap of this circuit. So long left-hander, that's off camber, a really tricky corner as you come in through there. Quick right, a quick left. This is absolutely flat out, one of the quickest corners on the circuit. As we come down this back straight, you can hear me lifting off. That's because I don't want to over rev the engine too much. We get on the brakes, down into this double right-hander, trying to maximize the exit. So we get on the throttle, running all the way out to the hay bales on the left-hand side. So this is a quick right-hander, really tricky. It was just a lift and a dab of brakes to get the nose in here. Over the bumps, there were some awkward bumps. Down onto the left-hand side, I found there was a little bit more grip on the inside. That's why the slightly unconventional racing line. Round to the right, um, you can see there's another mower going for a dive bomb. Here we go, you get used to that throughout this race. Round this left-hander, this right-hander was really tricky. It was bumpy, it was off-camber, and then you've got this following right-hander that you've got to get right. The tightest corner on the circuit, very, very tight here. Get on the throttle nice and early. You want to get that set up as early as you can. And then through to the right-hander, this is all the way onto the back straight. Really, really long straight on this uh, endurance circuit here. So as we come down onto this straight, you can see I was really happy with our straight line speed throughout this race. Um, we really match some of the group fours and some of the, well, all the group threes really down the straight. So we're happy with this. Down into this left hand is sort of this hammerhead section. So a tight left and then a hairpin right. Uh, and it got really rutted and bumpy as we get another dive bomb from number 64 there. I cut him back, why not? We're not having that. Uh, down into this right hand hairpin and then this sets us up onto this start finish straight so left hander here he gets me back again uh, and down onto their straight so that is a lap of this blmra 500 circuit and being a multi-class race part of the challenge here is dealing with all of the other classes you're not all going to be going at the same speed there's going to be quick ones there's going to be slow ones and this is what I learned early on in my first stint. This is my first endurance race ever. Here's number 66, he's a group four. He's a little bit wayward, a little bit all over the place. I don't think he was running quite at the front uh, of, this, of this group four. And it's really tricky because they are actually quicker through the corners, but I felt I had the pace overall. And you've kind of got to figure this out yourself. So as we come in through here, it's a little bit slower through the right-hander than I wanted to be, which put me offline as I try and avoid it. You can see there's another group four, number 44 coming around. He actually ran this race on his own, absolute maniac. Here we go. So he makes a move up the inside of 66. I then look and I'm thinking, am I going to go round the outside of this double right? So yeah, we'll try it here. I try and go round the outside, close it up on the apex. He comes through, runs a little bit wide, pushes me wide. As we go through this left, we're just trying to battle out for a position. I don't think he wanted to give it up to me too easily. So he sends it into this right-hander. Number 47 comes through with the cool underglow. There we go. 
as we come down this back straight and I'm trying to figure out how are we going to get past this guy. We jump on a little bit further. Number 80 makes a gap and I think, shall I go for this? Number 66 six keeps turning in on him i'm thinking i'm getting a good run here but this is a quick right hander this is like one of the most dangerous uh, corners on the circuit it's off camber there were big bumps and so i like, backed out of that one as we then come through here it's a little bit slow through these twisty sections i knew that's where we were going to be good so i go down the inside force him offline he's on the bumps on the outside and I managed to get the move done so that was a little bit of a lesson of trying to find your way around people who are in theory a little bit quicker number 22 he's a group two comes a little bit wide a little bit all over the place great paint scheme not great driving through that final corner as we find our way around you can see in the moment I wasn't massively happy with that it's all okay but <laughs> I wasn't massively happy with that by this point then we found our way up to p3 which is actually where we were through most of the race so here's number 33 and he's leading the chat uh, leading this uh, our class group three uh sean he's on that you can see he's absolutely sending it going around the outside really tidy making no mistakes their team were absolutely on it throughout this race actually batting for the overall lead you can see what here what goes wrong when you're when you've got multi-class racing uh you've got 46 sending it there and <laughs> We've got a group two coming up, so you've got to find your way. And normally they go through the inside and you can go around the outside. You can see here, Crazy runs him all the way wide, <laughs> taking his line. Uh, and you know, you've got to go around the slower classes. You, you need to go around them rather than them coming around you. So here we go, 51 sends it down the inside. And I pick my way around the outside, not getting in anyone's way. Uh, and trying to just find our way through. And this was a real battle of picking your way through. And you see a group four just oh, absolutely sends it on a group two. That's absolutely not what it's about. It's about finding your way around them without getting in anyone's way, just running your own race. And you can see, uh, <laughs> sending my commiserations to that group two uh, as they get rammed wide. So here we are, here's another group three, and we're actually going to lap them here. So 38, we were battling them throughout the whole race. They were behind us in P4. And as I got halfway through my sit, I think we managed to pull a lap on them. So I was happy with that move as we go through there. The 90, they were in, in the veterans class, another group three here. So we weren't directly battling them, but uh, it was all about trying to get past. And you can see they've just got an amazing straight line speed. They've got a Honda, that's why you can see here it's much louder than uh, our engine uh, with a straight through exhaust rather than a muffler. As they find their way around, so here we've got 22 again, the, uh, the mower with the great paint scheme. We like that. I'm trying to find my way up the inside, seeing if I can find a way past this number 90. Uh, but he's just got the legs on me. Uh, he was one of the other mowers that just had unbelievable straight line speed. Uh, as we find our way around this 25 again, we're just picking our way through the traffic. And that's really what it was all about. One lap on, you can see here, 90 just picks the wrong side of 22. 22 comes across him and he gets caught up and so we make the move. So it's all about trying to be predictable and also predicting where everyone else is gonna go here. You can see I make the mistake. I try and go around the outside because that's the unconventional line for a group two. Uh, get squeezed to the outside, but then find my way through. You can see I wasn't massively happy with that. A little bit scared I was gonna get squeezed. So as we come through here, this then uh, is how we were actually communicating on the side. On the side. We had these boards, so I knew I had five minutes left that's about three laps to push on and, and get this first stint done with. As 33 comes, absolutely sends it. Those guys, SDS Racing, were absolutely on it throughout this race. You can see here, they're just riding those bumps, absolutely flat out, no, no endurance. This, is, this was a sprint uh, race for them. So we come down this straight, and this is where I see the final board. I've got to pit in this lap. Uh, and so we come through one lap on, and this was the end of my first 45 minute stint. And so here we are, we're gonna get to see a pit, uh, pit stop. Now expect Formula One levels pit stop. So we pull in here on our marks, pull the cutoff off, stop the engine. I try and get the uh, fuel cap off. We then have this fuel filler. And uh, you can also see here, I knew there was something wrong with the wheel. So during the pit stop, I run and grab, try to find all my stuff, go and find my impact gun to just tighten up those wheel bolts on that right rear wheel. I could feel something wasn't right here. You can see a couple of them were a little bit loose. So we tighten those up before Andy is his, uh, our teammate's uh, first stint now. He's jumping on just after us as I'm trying to get these wheel bolts done up. So while the fuel's going in, I'm just trying to sort this out. And this was an issue we had throughout this race. Um, and we couldn't really figure out why. And we figured out eventually that it was a, a problem with the hubs. So Andy hops on and it's his turn to go. I just give any information you can just pass on, you know, it's bumpy here, avoid that corner. And so Andy goes and it's time for his 45 minute stint. Enjoy it. Yeah, it was fun actually. Hard work. Yeah. It's really bumpy. Yeah, I could, I could see you getting tired. I gave you a 20 minute board and your head just went. 
just finished my uh, first stint and that was hard, sweaty work. It was very bumpy and uh, <laughs> lots of traffic to deal with. But uh, Andy's gone out now and then Richard next after this and then I'm back on. So I've got an hour and a half to chill out for a bit, but oh, I'm sore already. Ugh. So an hour and a half later after some snacks, <laughs> here is Russ telling me when I need to go out. Uh, so Richard is currently on the mower uh, and it's time to go again. You can hear, see here, there's my seat insert. I wanted to sit just a little bit further forward. That's what I was used to racing in from my lawnmower. So I made a custom seat there, <laughs> cut out from a KA uh, rear seat. <laughs> so you can see here, I slot it on. I've then got these little bungee things that hold it on. Uh, and whenever I was out, I put this on and then after my stop, I had to pull it off again. So here we are, the fuel going in, cool little plunger jug, it like cuts off once it's full, which is very, very snazzy. So we go on and you can see here, it's much darker. Uh, and we're just talking about where to avoid, what's bumpy, what's going on. And you can also see here, we've got our pink neon light. So this is our first time in the night on a lawnmower. And here we are pulling out of the pit. think I thought the lights were good. <laughs> and just settling into our second 45 minute stint here, first time ever driving a lawnmower in the dark. And I was a bit apprehensive about this coming into this. I'd never done it before. I didn't know how good the lights were gonna be. Like, is it like you're on a car? And you can see here, it's a little bit narrower. Like you haven't got the same field of view, but actually you could see enough uh, and so that's what I was a little bit relieved about, but it's just finding our way around the circuit. Obviously, I know the track well by this point, but as you've got all these mowers going through, you can see here, oh, one running wide, uh, yellow flag. I see it late, I have to get on the brakes and avoid them. But as you're coming through here, the, the circuit really changes from, from minute to minute, the circuit changes. So you've got to go out and learn it again. Um, and so you've just got to find your way through the traffic learn the circuit i can build i was building up to this uh, fairly suddenly you know not way off the pace but also you don't want to go flat out straight away and get oh there we are a couple of dive bombs there we go from group fours that's kind of how it goes um but you don't want to catch a bump by surprise and have it throw you off so through this stint we cracked on with it but i started to know something was wrong i could feel the mower wasn't steering right it was all over the place as i came through some of the quick corners it was wallowing around. I thought maybe it's something wrong with the steering. Maybe it's something wrong with one of the wheels. I didn't know what it was and I puzzled it for a while. I did a few laps to check it was definitely a problem. And now the thing I didn't want was for me to come off or have an issue around the other side of the track. So I came in, I made the decision to pit. So here we are coming in and this wasn't a planned stop. I could feel my wheel was coming loose. There was something in the steering, something was wrong. So here we are pitting to try and fix that before something goes horribly wrong and it throws me off. So I was checking the rears, didn't spot anything there. We then get the front up on the jack stands, get it into our makeshift garage, you can see here in the gazebo, uh, with a wooden plank to make sure we don't lose any bolts. It was getting weirder and weirder, you can see here. I didn't want to turn the, I didn't want to ruin the battery life. So we're checking over the steering and there was nothing too obvious. We couldn't figure out what the problem was. I then looked at the rear and said, ah, there you go. The rear wheel was coming loose. So what was happening is there's bolts in the hubs that then were backing them their way out and that the, the bolts were coming loose. So as I was turning in, I could feel that rear right wheel was all over the place. I knew something was wrong, but I didn't know what it was. So we got it fixed and got me back out there. But this meant after doing 15 minutes, I then had to do another 45 minute stint. But that was a 10 minute loss of time, which, you know, that equates to eight laps on our competitors, which was really annoying. It dropped us down the order, but I knew if that wheel had come off, I'm gonna really injure myself and cost us more time. So I knew we had to get it fixed and it couldn't wait. That last bolt was hanging on by its last threads. So we boxed, got it fixed, and then I told them to send me out for another 45 minutes stint. So we filled up the tank and went again. So now was our time to really push and try and make up for that time. There's a little thumbs up to tell the guys it was fixed and the problem wasn't persisting. But this stint really was one of carnage. So you can see there on the right, someone telling me to slow down, waving their arms around. And you see there, there was actually Richard, my teammate, with a yellow flag. It was hard to see the marshals post down here. And over there, there is a mower overturned and someone on the floor. Unfortunately, he broke his collarbone. Uh, this post on the Facebook group said he ran out of talent. 
Uh, fortunately, they, they got him off the track and to safety. And you see here, as we come by this, this 69, oh, it just slows up, parks it right on the apex. I was not expecting that. Slows it up right again as we come up the inside and go past from here. In the heat of the moment, I was a little bit annoyed about that. I did want to come together with another mower and that was really unexpected. But this stint really was the stint of carnage throughout this race. So here we are, See, we see another yellow flag. We lift off, stick our arm up, get on the brakes. You see there's red sticks waving and there's another mower unfortunately overturned. Uh, and that was Leon, he was running the race on his own, but fortunately he got back on the mower in the morning, uh, was just winded and got up and took some time off and then got back through it. So here we are going round the outside of another group two, still funning our way through traffic. There really wasn't much time here where you were on your own, you were cracking on with it. Here we are, another yellow flag, down at the same corner as mower over on the right, and that was another person. This stint, that was about, f uh, the space of about five minutes there. And so there's three people off, the safety car came out so they could adjust the track and make sure everyone was okay and away from the circuit. But here was another thing. As we came around this next corner, once we got restarted, I came around here, turned into the right, the apex I'm used to hitting, and look at that. Someone's just put a hay bale in the middle of the circuit. Look there. I was, I, I'm sure there was a hole or something that we were trying to cover, but you come around there and you're so used to hitting your marks that I would have plowed straight over that. <laughs> That's why I was shouting. Anyway, stint of chaos over. We need to hand the mower over to Andy. We're gonna jump straight forward to my next stint. So from midnight, we're now jumping straight back forward to 3 a.m. There we go, driver to driver information exchanged and we jumped straight back out into a pack of group four. So we're trying to find our way through traffic. You can see here, they're battling up ahead. They're battling our next uh, 52 here. Uh, there's a group three slow in the middle of the track. So we go around there, 48 slows up on the apex. So you're finding our way around the outside and you're straight back into it. You're sleepy, it's 3 a.m. You're aching now, your ass hurts from the seat and uh, you've got to get straight back into it. And look how bumpy it is. Going round the outside of a group four there. I was quite happy with that move, look at that. But here we go, our nemesis slows up right on the apex. Uh, we're used to that happening so we're finding our way through. I then find my way up the inside uh, as we go into this next group of corners and going round the outside of this one. So I think that's move done there. As we come down this straight, I can see there a 20 minute board. So we're halfway through our stint. And here's 90, the veteran team. So they're actually allowed six drivers. So they're in a slightly different class as we find our way through there We're on the same class of mower uh, as us. And in this racing, it's really interesting because you're doing it all by the light. So look on the left there. That is a bad sign. You know Dive Bomb is incoming, and that is what happened when you see the lights pull out. So here's the 81, another tourist mower. Uh, so again, they're allowed to run bigger engines. They're slightly bigger, not to dimensions. And uh, a little bit rude there. And here's another one. And so when you see those lights pull out, you know, okay, I'm not gonna fight this. I'm not gonna get in the shunt all for this. But speaking of which, this next one was the biggest close call we had. So if you look over to the right, there's a mower. And what happened is they, you can see here, they ran wide, they went off the circuit, but kept it flat and rejoined at 90 degrees to the circuit and actually went up on two wheels. Look at that, to avoid me. That was an incredibly close call. That kind of shook me a bit there. I was thinking, you've got to give people some real space here because you never know what they're going to do. But a quiet end to the stint and we get pulled in. So we come here in for another pit stop, handing over to Andy once again. And this was our third stint each here. So pull the cut off out, cut the engine and uh, pass on a little bit of information to Andy there and helm it off and time to chill out for an hour and a half or so. So now it's 5 a.m. It's time for us to get back on the mower and things are really rutting up. It's getting tough. It's getting really hard. So as we put our seat on the mower, as we always do, time to get on. And Richard just passes on some information that was really crucial, actually. Quite smooth lines. Huh? That's a quite smooth line. Like this one. Second corner, all the way around the outside on the looster. Cut across back diagonally to get to the inside of the next one. It's pretty smooth. And you're going all the way around the outside. Right, all the way around there, yeah. And then in the top ones, keep it tight to the inside. And then the back one down here, around the outside again. So there we go, information exchanged. And now was our time to go out and try that. So we pull out for our 
Uh, this is our fourth stint, and this was the most painful stint I've ever done on a lawnmower. I was really on my limit. So here we are on the left. You can see here, we're trying this line all the way around the outside here, and it is much smoother there. Good advice from Richard. And we cut across up to the inside. It was really rutted on the outside there, so it wasn't worth it. And you can see just how bumpy it is as we come through there. Now on this long left-hander, Richard was actually suggesting going all the way around the outside. So we're used to sort of swinging it down the inside here. So you'd be up on that 57s line there. So we swing it all the way around the outside and it's still quite bumpy, but a little bit less. So we're trying all these lines out, trying to figure our rhythm out, get up to pace uh, as we go for a move there and really get on with it. But look how rutted it was. As I get on the brakes there, you're thrown around, you're out the seat, trying to cling onto the damn thing. And my thighs, all the way down either side of my ass, was just so bruised from the previous stints. Now trying to get back on the mower and all, all the pain is in the same place. Honestly, it was so, so painful. I should have fixed this seat before this race and I was really regretting it at this point. You could hear that I was really in pain throughout this stint. It was one of the hardest things I've ever done to do this full 45 minute stint in this much pain. You know, you just sat on bruises. It was so, so bad. For the whole start of this race, it hadn't caught up with me. And at this point, 5 a.m., it really caught up with me. I was trying to, down the straight, push my ass out of the seat there. I'm actually slouching. You can see my position's all different. Trying to get my ass into a comfortable position. But then as you go through the corner, you've got to sit back uh, in that seat, you know, right back in the seat. And it was so rutted. Look at this. Look at how bad that track is. You're doing 45 miles an hour over those ruts. Look at that. It just knocks the wind out of you if you catch one of them in, in the wrong way. And uh, yeah, I was really regretting not spending some more time on that seat. As we come through this left-hander, this was actually where it was worse because you're going quite quickly through this corner and it's so rutted where everyone's running the same lines. And we come through here and you can see I'm way off the pace. Uh, my pace isn't nearly what it should be and I knew that, but I had a decision to make here is, do I pit and uh, cost us loads more time or do I just run a couple of seconds off my pace, off what I know I can do and just crack on with it? Because if I get off this mail and pass it over to one of the other guys, it just makes it harder on them. So I took the hit on the time and I just spent 40 minutes in pain and got on with it. So with another part of that rear seat that actually formed my little seat insert there, taped to my ass, you can't quite see it there, literally duct taped round me like a belt. Uh, I got back on the mower, nuts tightened, fuel in, and off we go for our final stint. I knew I had 30 minutes left to get to the end of this race. So little pep talk done there. You just try to get some adrenaline going. We're so exhausted by this point. We've been up all night. None of us slept. We're absolutely exhausted. <laughs> my ass was hurting and you can still hear that. I'm trying to get myself psyched up for this. I had 30 minutes left before I had to hand over for Richard for his 30 minutes. And then it was going to be the end of this race. And we cracked on with it. And with that foam, it made all of the difference. I wasn't in pain anymore. I was physically hurting, aching a bit. You can see 56 absolutely sending it there. But I was back on my pace. I knew I was back in my rhythm. I could get on without it, without thinking about anything else, just cracking on with it. As we go for a move up the inside on 47, some fellow teammates, they actually went through three engines in this race. Poor them. Uh, they had some really hard luck there. As we go around the outside of this group too, and we're cracking on with it. You can see a couple of the corners have moved a little bit. Um, the circuit, the organizers moved them a little bit to just expose some clean uh, turf there to just try and get allow us to get around some of those ruts. You can see 80 is a little bit all, all over the place here. Probably also tired and in a lot of pain. So we go up the inside of this left-hander and I was back on form. I knew we were battling for P3 at this point. We had P4 on our tail and this was our final step. I knew we had to match their pace. We had a lap on them and we just had to match their pace. You can see here, there's actually water on the lens here. So it started to rain. And on this really slick mud, it started to get really slippery. Um, but the, luckily the rain was only, only fairly brief. Uh, and we got through that. And here's the end of my stint. 
So following this, Richard cracked on with his final 30, 30 minutes for us to come home in P3, a podium on our first ever endurance race as a team. My first endurance race ever and a podium and a trophy. This was incredible, a really hard, hard race. One of the hardest things I've had to do, but thoroughly enjoyable. Thank you to the BLMRA. You should definitely do this. If you're debating lawnmower racing, do it. Subscribe to my channel. See you in the next one.